Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Timothy chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, God our Savior? Who's our Savior? It's Jesus Christ. God our Savior? That's Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so that and is in addition to. Now we see God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, occults will teach well, God on the left hand side and Jesus Christ on the right on the right hand side. Yeah, but they're one. Which is our hope? I mean, God's not our hope, just the Lord Jesus Christ. Very interesting. On to Timothy. Now we're going to look at Timothy. Timothy is an interesting character. My own son in the faith. So Paul witnessed to Timothy at one time and Tim Timothy got saved. So there are such things as <coughs> spiritual children. And if you don't have children that are saved that are of you, flesh and blood, Get yourself some spiritual children and train them. Now the man that witnessed to me back in April 1987 showed me the Bible, showed me what I needed to do to be saved, but he stopped after that Saturday. He never showed me anything in the Bible. He never helped me grow. He just, all right, here's a newborn baby. He just, thank God God took over me. And then when it came time to a special time in my life, he, he ignored me. That's not how to be. We're going to see this young man, and he's a young man. I don't know how old, but he's young. Paul has trained this man to be of a great use for the ministry. Timothy can do things that preachers today, most of them cannot do. Unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith. It's not Paul's physical son. We read that Timothy's father was a Greek. His mother was a Jewish. His grandmother and his mother are recorded to bring this young man up in the Bible. Grace, mercy, and peace. From God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. There it is again, both of them. Peace, that's one of the fruit of the Spirit. So that would be the Holy Spirit working there. All three of them. Scripture with Scripture. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. Now we read a book about Ephesians. Very good church right after Galatians that got involved in being put back in the law by some deceivers. But he said, Timothy, stay here. Now, Timothy wanted to go with Paul. Besieged. No, no, Timothy, stay. Come on, Paul, can I go with you? No, stay here. I want to go. Timothy, stay here. Where Timothy stayed, they worship a Diana, the Greek love goddess. Now, would you see why, if Timothy really loved the Lord, why he would not want to be in this country? This is the same place. Diana, the great God, the silver shrines, the image that fell from Jupiter. And Timothy's like, I don't want to be here. I'll be with you, Paul. 
And the whole city was given over to Diana. So you see what the love of Timothy is? He does not want to be anywhere where God's not. Paul says, stay. When I went into Macedonia. So Paul goes to Macedonia. He leaves Timothy behind. That thou, okay, here it is. That thou mayest charge some that day. Teach no other doctrine. All right, Timothy, stay in Ephesus. Oh, Paul, stay. All right, what do you want me to do? You better rebuke these, some of these people. How's that? There's false teachers. And Timothy's charge is to rebuke them. So Timothy has to be a strong man in the word and in the Lord that he's going to go against the enemy. Not Diana. He's going against those that are deceiving the church. That's a very remarkable man. I don't see pastors today defending their flocks, teaching them about the ways of the television and radio preachers and giving them warnings. Timothy would get up at the pulpit and say, hey, this is the man that's in trouble. This is the doctor that's causing division. This is what you're not supposed to do. He's a strong man. And it started off with mom and grandma. Neither give heed to fables. That means you don't lie in a pulpit and tell funny little stories that are not true so everyone can giggle. That's You don't believe old wives' tales. You don't listen to Aesop's fables. You don't listen to uh, fairy tales. Don't give in to them. If they're lies and tales, don't give heed to them. Don't even give them the time. And endless genealogies. That's the Mormon's function. The Mormons in Utah have a great big vault of dead people's names that you can... You know why they do that? So you can pay homage for those people whose souls are in some kind of damnation that you can pray for those souls out. That's why they do it. They don't do it so you can know your family tree. They believe that souls departed, you know, they need like the Roman Catholic Church. They need money and cash and you can get them out. That's why they do it. Beware of endless genius. They go on and on and on and on. And with every family tree, you're going to find some relative that's hanging from it. You're going to find somebody, oh, I wish I didn't know that. I got a family member that came over on the Mayflower. And then later on, was selling in, in a tavern of his. Ooh, I want to know that. Which men, minister questions. Not good questions. These are not questions that are going to edify you as a Christian. And these questions would be like people ask, where did, how did Noah get all, get all the uh, animals in the ark? That's, that's a stupid question. Can God make a rock so heavy he can't? That's a stupid question. And then this would be a realm of science. All these questions that science asks, and do they ever have the answers? No. It makes more questions. Questions are good, but if questions can't be answered, and they lead to more questions, which can't be answered in more questions, that's not good. Rather than godly edifying. So there are questions that you can ask that will be to know God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the things in the Bible. Those are proper questions. And there are some things in the Bible that you've got to say, I don't know. That's okay. We don't know it all. But there are many things we do know. Which is in faith. So there are a lot of questions. Guess what? You've got to believe by faith. Jesus Christ, born of a virgin. You can't prove that earthly. Even if you found a hall of records, you found that moment that here is Mary and Joseph's name written down, having a baby in a, in a manger in the city of Bethlehem. And yet, what did the Sadducees and the Pharisees say? You were, you, were, you were born of fornication. So we've got to take that the virgin birth, we've got to take it by faith. And what's the question about the virgin birth? How did it happen? Well, to give out a full detail, I can't tell you. I can tell you the, the Gospel of Luke, the medical doctor said, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and that holy seed, it 
can you use the word for, uh, fertilization? I don't know. But that womb grew in Mary without the aid of a man. That's faith. And there's some questions with that. But we, he was able to give life to Adam and Eve. He was able to give life to Adam and Eve. So, godly education. So there are godly questions. There are people who come up to the street. They will ask you true questions of the Bible on that that need to be answered. And then there are people who come, oh, where did Cain get his wife? Who cares? I got the answer to that. Father-in-law. Now, what are you going to do about your phone? Now, the end of the commandment commandment is charity out of a pure heart. So all the commandments, what's the end of them? Charity. From where? Your heart. You love the Lord with all your mind, your, all your heart, with all your soul. And from your heart comes the love of God of giving. Some people give because it's an IRS form. Some people give so people see them giving. So pe some people give so they can get back. And of a good conscience. You know, a good conscience will have you sleep well at night. You know that? It'll make you rest when all around you is tri trials and tribulations. And of faith unfeigned. Unfeigned is real and sincere. It's not Hollywood, it's not make believe. It is true character of your belief. I'm gonna say right now, when it comes to Timothy, growing up as a young man, when you have your youth group act out different things and stuff like that, it's skits, you're not setting your children out as Timothy. I don't care what you say. Because they're framing to be somebody else and something else that they're not. That's not a good start. Yes, I have to say that. From which some have served. You ever see that in, in America? You ever see that, that yellow street sign? The car, you know, he swerves. There's a wet, slippery spot ahead. Swerves has turned aside. He's gone off the road and he's slid. Onto vain jaggling. Uh, I'm see my note here. Quarreling. Noisy dispute. Vain. They're debating. They're having debates. They're having arguments that mean nothing, have nothing to do with nothing, and nothing for godly edification. So they'll come into the church and say, well, we will challenge your what you believe with what we believe. And we'll give each person 30 seconds to speak. And for what purpose does it come out at the end? And churches that get involved in those things, they're wrong. We're not supposed to be fighting. And if we do have someone who's debating us, who don't believe the Bible. What are we supposed to go in all the world and debate? No, go in all the world of the gospel. They don't believe the gospel. What do you do? All right, get out of my face. Because if you're not going to do the gospel, you ain't going to do nothing else. You're wasting my time. Somebody else may want to receive the gospel. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Let me move on. I'll let you move on. And there's no sense in somebody coming up to you debating on the street. You know, you know hey, it's the gospel. I'll answer what questions you got, and that's it. There are some times when I think when the Jehovah Witnesses come, I will debate if I think that person with them is young and new, try to get them out. In other words, if they think they know what they're doing, they seem to be skilled in the religion, all right, here's a couple Bible verses, be gone. We're not supposed to debate. <clears throat> They'll be debating with God one day. You just be faithful to the Word of God and what God's told you to do, and God, will, God, see, you plant the seed, you water God will give the increase. No fighting is going to do anything. Proverbs said, e, yea, he that is good fighting with him that's a fool. And you know what? You both look foolish. All right, now here's the problem. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Now this already crept into Galatia Church. 
We've already read the, the, the epistle of the Ephesians. They were a right church. Remember he warned them about the law? Timothy, stay here. Don't let this happen to the Ephesians as it happened to the Galatians. Stand firm and fight and be a young man in a battle and of the word. Because there are people who are entering the Ephesians with letters behind their name. With their name in big letters. The ministry of such and such. We're going to teach you what God has to say. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. They have no idea what they're saying. Oh, the Hebrew and the Greek. They don't know the Hebrew and Greek. They don't know the biblical Hebrew and the Greek. Because no one speaks the biblical Hebrew and Greek today. Who cares? As an American, I press one. I can understand English. And they use these big, fluffy words that nobody understands. They make themselves out somebody they're really not. And they never probably led a soul to Christ. They probably never came up to someone who's lost and witnessed to them. But we know that the law is good. Look at that. The law is good. If a man use it lawfully. Now what is Paul saying there? You don't use it for salvation you use it we're going to see the next verse to show a man's a sinner i do not preach on the street say hey you know if thou keep the ten commandments you're going to heaven no that's wrong but if you broke stealing we don't need to do the other nine forget the other nine you've done one if you told one lie in your life, forget the other nine, you broke one. How about the first commandment? God first all the time, every time, every moment, every time. We broke the first one. We don't need the rest of the nine. That is to show, hey, you are guilty. The law is to be used rightfully to say, hey, you're a sinner. Okay, now what you do with your sins? Well, use the law to get you saved. Now you're using it wrongly. When you can use the law to say, hey, this is what you're guilty of. When that person, now, hey, you know what? I'm a sinner. Now you go into the, to the New Testament. Now you go and deal with him with sin through Jesus Christ. Who is the end of the law. Who fulfilled the law. That we might have hope. Use the law all you can. I mean, even the I mean verses right there, you know, tattoo. Show them those, if you you got a tattoo all the time. Say, hey, you see the you know what you're doing is violation of the law. You're guilty. But you don't use the law for salvation. Uh, I, I've heard I've heard of, of men who go on door knocking, and one man I used to know he's be so funny. He, he pulled a person out of his house and said, hey, you know, especially a Jewish person. He said, where's your battlement around your roof? You're a Jewish man. You you go to the temple, the, 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 uh, the synagogue, and you don't have a battlement around your roof? And he say something like, you need to go to Jerusalem. And what he's doing, he's showing them the law. He's saying, hey, that law violated not having that battlement. And I used to love listening to him. And the fact is, okay, go to Jerusalem. Wait a minute. What's going to happen if you go to Jerusalem? You can't go to Jerusalem. The temple's not there, so your law can't save you. And then that would open up the door, which would be very quick. Doing with the Jew would be Jesus Christ, and that, as soon as you mention that, that would close right there. But the law was used to say, hey, you're not doing what God told you to do now. Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man. Can you get it more clearly than that? Under grace, okay, now let's just be honest here. Under grace, the seven-day Adventist, Mary Baker, any of that, don't give me this, I can't eat crabs, lobsters, and shellfish. Because the law is not made for me righteousness in Jesus Christ. 
I don't have to live. I can have a dog in my house or a cat, even though they are unclean. I am under grace through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, I always said as an example, if I'm going to sit down with a meal with a Jewish man and hopefully talk about the Bible with him, I will not order pork or a lobster. Because guess what? If he's not saved, he's still under the condemnation of the law. He's still guilty. I'm not. But for conscience sake and for the ability to, to reach someone with the gospel, I've got to do some things by their life. And the hope to show them that they're guilty and bring the Christ. But as far as, you know, I get to heaven and God said, you know, I counted every single lobster you ate. And man, I'm telling you, 1993, you ate a lot of lobsters. You ain't coming here because I said no shellfish. And with all those lobsters you ate, go to hell. No. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Jesus Christ suffering and dying and, and being, according to the scriptures, and being buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I'm not going to heaven because I violated the dietary law. That's stupid. Because I kept Sunday instead of Saturday. Really? So, you deal with a lost man. Do you give God one day of the week? One whole day. Do you rest your body? You know where Revelation 20 is? Go to Revelation 20 and say, listen, you're supposed to have a day off. You're supposed to give yourself rest. You're a violation of what the law said. If you don't take one day off. Now, I wouldn't say Saturday or I wouldn't say Sunday. It says, listen, one day. You take one day. You take one. The Bible says you're supposed to give yourself rest if you don't do it. That's somebody good with, with a convenience store and all that. Or a man that has his own business with his family. He works seven days a week, 38 hours a day. And when you take the fact, oh, I am, I'm supposed to take a rest. Yeah, my health is not good and all that. Then what do you do? You bring him to the gospel. You bring him to Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ take care of the law in him. That the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless. And disobedient. Use it for lost people. That's what it's written for. Then you bring them the gospel. For the ungodly. Alright. And for the sinners. Are you. If you're a child of God. Are you. Through the spiritual circumcision of your soul and your flesh. Are you considered a sinner to God. As a child of God. No. No. Your flesh is. You've been having, you've had that spiritual circumcision. You've got God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit indwelling with you. Yeah, you may sin, but in the eyes of God, you've got Jesus' righteousness. Then that law is not for us. It's for that flesh. And what does the law state? The wages of sin is death. Well, that's not the law, but that law showed me who I am. If I did not have the law, be the wages of, I ain't got no way. I'm just going to go and do my life, eat, drink, and be merry. And tomorrow I die. Oh, you mean I lied? You mean I didn't get rest? You mean I, 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 that pencil I stole, I'm under the condemnation? Death. For unholy. I'm holy. And profane. These are how Paul sees the unsaved person. This is not supposed to be Christians. For murderers. And watch this. Not just murderers. Murderers of fathers. And murderers of mothers. Boy, he really names that one down. Now, why is he specific about parents? I have no idea. Maybe it's because of where he is in Ephesians. Maybe something's going on there. I don't know. For manslayers. Yeah. Thou shalt not kill is in the Ten Commandments. 
A Christian ought to know he's not supposed to kill. For whoremongers. Do you think Rahab really knew what her sin was? Did those spies come into her and say, hey, man, we'll put a scarlet uh, thing around you. But, you know, lady, you are involved in sin because you know, we're not supposed to have to know. She was never dealt with about her sin or the law. But boy, did she have faith, didn't she? You know what she was guilty about? God is angry with us and he's going to kill us. That's enough. You may deal with somebody in your ministry. You have They may come to you. You know what? Forget the fact is stealing, lying, all that. I fear God and I don't want God to put any damnation or whatever the damnation is. Everybody prays for that person to come up. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Drinking buddies. Sexual sins. Proverbs 1. Hey! Come join us. We're going to go kill somebody and take their goods. Unions. Secret societies. Religions. For man stealers. There's your slave trade. And it's going on more frequently in Paul's time. For a lot. Woohoo! Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's a liar. For perjured persons, people who go to court and lie. I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth with their fingers crossed, their eyes, pins in their eyes, and cross the heart and hope to die. You see what Paul's saying to Timothy too as a message? These are not supposed to be Christians. This is not supposed to be me as a Christian. I am supposed to be above all these things. But I am saved. And I do sin. I got the blood of Jesus Christ. I confess my sins. He is faithful and just to forgive me my sins. But you don't need the, the law to me. I already know what the Bible says. I know what sin is. And I am more guilty because what? I now know what the law says. You get somebody who cusses Jesus Christ as a cuss. If he's never read the Bible, he doesn't know what he's doing. He has he probably doesn't even know why he cusses Jesus. But if I read the Bible all the way through and I use the name of Jesus Christ in vain, where did I learn that? Reading the Bible. For perjured person, and if there be any other thing, just in case I forgot something. That's how Paul sums it up. I could write this letter and name every single sin ever to be, but every other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now, this is the problem. Somebody's trying to creep into Europe with the law. Paul says the law is for the unsaved person to cast guilt upon them. Anything else is contrary to sound doctrine. Dietary laws. After the, you have to follow holidays. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Remove the law and bring the gospel. Use the law to show the person the sinner. Okay. We have acknowledged sin. We have seen what sin is. Verse 11. What do you do? You bring the gospel. That's it. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now Paul's on his way back to Bethel. He's going to go back to the miserable, scoundrel sinner that he was. And don't you think Paul knew the law? 
Paul was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was the elite of the elite. The Bible says go after those people with a false prophet. Go after those people with a false doctrine and kill them. Paul was on them. But what was he lacking? He was lacking in the gospel that Jesus died for him. He was lacking the faith of Jesus Christ. He did not get saved and right with God till he believed on Jesus. If that road of Damascus ever did not happen in Paul's life, he can go back and have anything he wanted and do anything he wanted according to that strict law as a Pharisee, and he would have died and still gone off into hell. And he knew the law. And he obeyed the law. And he was still guilty without the gospel. Who was before a blasphemer. Ooh, there's another sin. <laughs> Chapter 1 of Timothy. I mean, you hit that nail on the head with sins. He, he's writing them all out. And a, persecur a, pers yeah, a persecutor. Well, there's another sin. That's the high priest and all the family that, that knows Paul. In Jerusalem, James... And, and John and Peter are being persecuted by the Jews. Stephen was killed. Thessalonica, they're getting all kinds of persecution. That's a sin. And it injurious. But I obtained mercy. See? Man, he was a elite of the elite. But he had not mercy. You know what the law is? The law is condemning. The law is fearful. The Lord is, 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 the law is, condemn him. Damn him. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Paul knew exactly what he's doing, but the words of Jesus, you don't know what you're doing. Paul, you're persecuting me. No, 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 I'm persecuting the Christian. Oh, no, you're not. You have no idea what you're doing, Paul. Every one of those Christians, you're doing it to me. People don't realize when they come up, whatever ministry you got, whatever attitude you get to your disliking, they're doing it to God and Jesus Christ. And they don't even know that. So where is that one? Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. That Bible, oh, that's just stupid. Oh. Careful, sir, please. Careful what you say. The law says, because you're not saved, the law says you're guilty. Judge not leave you be judged. Sir, the law is judging you. Would you like to come to Calvary and be free? But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He had no idea what he was doing. He thought he was doing well and good for God. Man, he learned something in that road to Damascus. And the grace, mercy and grace, are not in the law. That man was picking up sticks one afternoon. Oh, he's okay. See, America's mercy and graceful. But the law of God is you stone him. Come on, he, he took a, a wedge of gold and, a, and some silver and a garment. <laughs> really? You can probably find someone in America that has done that in Walmart today. They take a gold necklace, a silver ring, and, and maybe a dress. And you're going to take his entire family and all his pets and everything, and you're going to take them down, and you're going to stone him? That's what the law said. You know, people are in jail because of the law. And they don't realize the greatest blessing when God sends a man with a Bible into the prison with mercy and grace. While you're under the condemnation of the law. That's, the, that's why people in jail get saved more than anybody else in the outside world. Because they've seen the law, the actions, and the, and the 
the result of the law. And when you come in with mercy and grace, you're like, wow. I am guilty of that crime, but God will forgive me. And yes. I've seen big, strong men in prison break down and cry and say, i got to have that. And let me tell you, that judge I'm going to see next week, he ain't going to show me no mercy. He's going to probably keep me in here longer. Yeah, but you know what? God is better than the law. Because God fulfilled the law. Exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. There's no love in the law. Someone in your family preaches another salvation, another God. You take him and you kill him. I don't care you love him. You kill them. The Bible says if you don't discipline your child, you don't love him. It hurts. Discipline hurts. Both parent and child. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptance. Oh, here we go. This is something good and right. Receive it. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. John 3.16. Of whom I am chief. Now, that's just not worse. This is a humble man. Paul just talked and named a whole bunch of sins. You know what he said? I am worse than all that. And I'm saved. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy. Not by the law. That in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. For a pattern to them which should believe. Wait, wait, which should hereafter believe on him. To life everlasting. You know, you know what you know what Paul's teaching Timothy? Timothy, you're staying here where the law is coming back. People are deceiving the people with the law. You teach them about sin, but you show them mercy and grace. How do you battle the law being deceiving teachers? Mercy and grace. Timothy, that is your tool. The gospel of Jesus Christ is your weapon. And I want to know, Timothy, I'm the worst sinner. I was a Pharisee. I obeyed that law. I didn't know what I was doing. But yet, even in my ignorance, I am and was the chief sinner. You know why I am where I am today? Not because I obeyed the law, because of the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. When you go or stay in Ephesians, and you're doing with the Ephesus church, keep them with the mercy and grace and gospel of Jesus Christ, and that will keep the law out. Remind them of my testimony. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ may show forth all long suffering. When you did something that was contrary to the law that, did, that demanded the death penalty, you were to receive it right then and there. God says, I'm not willing that any should perish. I'll let a man live 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 years until he can still hear that gospel before he falls off in death. There may be a reason, there may be one person at the farmer's market for our family that God says, I want you there just for him. He is selling grapefruits and you stay there week after week after week after week just for that man. Don't you worry about anybody. I have you there just for that man. That may be the case. I don't know. I'm just saying. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Your life as a Christian should be patterns to other people. They should. Hey, that's what a Christian is supposed to be doing. 
I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna I'm gonna latch on to him. I'm gonna find out more. I'm gonna find out everything I can do. That's what a Christian is supposed to be. It's not. There are very many poor examples, more than there are good examples today in today's church. Now unto the King Eternal. There's no beginning, no ending. There's always everlasting. Immortal, no more death. Invisible, we can't see him. The only wise God. Ooh, 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 Paul, 16, you're talking about Jesus Christ. Don't call him God. He's God. Paul said so. There he is. That's God. Be honor. Well, the Old Testament said he only honored Jehovah. Uh huh. And glory forever and ever. <laughs> ever and ever and ever. Amen. You know, you see where that would watch. God be honor and glory forever and ever. You know what the world's version it is of that? I'll tell you. They live happily ever after. They stole from the Bible. The 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 little handmaid, she met the prince, they got married, they rode off on, on the nice white horse. And they live ever happily ever after for the rest of life. You know, even though you know he got her a bunch of maids and they couldn't clean as best as she did. She knew how to wash the clothes a lot more than the maids did. No, no, no. The Bible says it's the Bible. They live happily ever after. But be glory forever and ever. You know what you're going to get in heaven? You're going to give God honor and glory for all eternity in heaven. It's about Jesus Christ, not of works. Not of works, at least any man boast. So forget about the law. We're not going to boast for glory and honor forever and ever. But, oh, I never stole anything. Oh, aren't you a good guy? Well, I never lied. Well, you, hey, glory to you. You never lied. Wow, great. I never had seafood. Oh, praise you. No. Our salvation rests not on the law, but Jesus Christ God. To him be the glory forever. To him that has the marks in his hands and his side and his feet. Why? Because the law can't save me. Jesus saved. And only Jesus saved. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. This is almost like Moses going to Joshua. There's big trouble in Ephesians. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> By Timothy, by Joshua. I can always imagine Joshua when, when God said, "Choose Joshua." Go, what? You mean they're going to do everything they've done to you, Moses? No, no, sorry. Can I get you? No. But here's another type again: Moses and Joshua. You got Paul and Timothy. And like Joshua, Timothy's got a lot of battles ahead of him. But they say that Timothy's a young man, and he Paul must have brought him up well in the Lord because Paul's saying, Hey, I got this great big challenge right now. I've got this battlefield. Uh who? Timothy. And Timothy did not want to go, remember verse three. And Paul's like, Hey, you're well learned, you're well versed, you're the man. I'm leaving. <laughs> It was like, oh, poor Timothy. They didn't have cell phones or anything back then either. You know, he couldn't call. Oh, hell. No, he couldn't do that. So, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. So, Timothy was involved in prophecies. That thou be, th that thou by them. Watch, watch. Midas war a good warfare. Timothy, stay in Ephesians. What do you what do, what do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to fight. I want you to put that armor on. You see that sword you got? I want you to use it. Christians don't fight today. It says, a good warfare. Now, I got a note over here that says, the good warfare. You know, it's not the good warfare. You know why? 
if you've been saved many years, haven't you had many different warfares, many different battles? It's not one battle. It's all different kind of battle. And you don't know who's going to pop up around that corner. You need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. That guy was faced with all kinds of warfare. Man, Satan, flesh, and God threw all kinds of things at Christians. It's not one. Token progress. Don't get a Christian saying, oh, I'm going to have one big battle and that's going to be the end. No. When he gets victory over one battle, guess what? There's soon to be, when you get down in that mountain, when you get down that valley, you near the top of the mountain, guess what? You look down, there's another valley. When you've got a Bible that says, Doug, good work, it makes it sound, there's just one problem, that's it. No. Don't lie. Holding faith. What was that armor of faith? Remember? The armor, spiritual armor that Paul spoke about in Jesus. Which one was faith? Shield of faith. Hold it. Because Timothy, the battle you're getting into, there's going to be some darts thrown at you. There are going to be people who are going to misuse your name. They're going to lie about you. They're going to do whatever they want. You better put that faith. What's the faith in? The law? No. Jesus Christ. The gospel. You're going to need it. And good conscience. You better do what you're doing. That Hey, you ain't guilty. Because you know what they're going to do to you? They're going to lie about you. And when they lie about you, hey, listen, between God and me, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. That's their lie. Character again. Which some, having put away the faith and the conscience, concerning faith, has made shipwreck. They got rid of their faith, they got rid of their conscience, and they headed right for rocks. And they broke that ship apart, and there are things floating, there are things that sunk, there's lives lost, there's destruction, there's no money, it's, you can't use it no more. The ship is gone. Taken from Paul, I think he said he had, what, three shipwrecks himself? Paul knows exactly what he's talking about, Timothy. Timothy may have been one of the people with him on one of them shipwrecks. He might be reminding Timothy, remember one of those shipwrecks we had? Hmm. Isn't that a good illustration? Of whom is Hyomaeus and Alexandria. Man, Paul is naming names. You got to be careful. I'm not saying, I mean, be careful. Today, you got a law system in America. If you mix in someone's name, they can take you to court. If our system was, our court system was after the Bible, you wouldn't have to have that fear. If they were found to be liars, you wouldn't get a lying jury to protect the lies. But, of whom is Hyamaeus and Alexander? Now watch this. Who has to who I, Paul, have delivered unto Satan? Paul did that to the man that was committing fornication in the Corinthian church. This is twice Paul has turned somebody over to Satan. You didn't want to get Paul mad. You didn't want to get involved with sin. And Paul said in Corinthians, for the destruction of the flesh. That Satan may go after them, Satan may kill them, or destroy them, so that they will not... Looks like they could be saved, these two. But man, they're causing a stir. They had the faith. They had the conscience. They gave it up. They shipwrecked it. And man, before they do any more damage, let Satan kill them. So they don't lose all their rewards if they gain any. They're on the road to destruction and let Satan help them. How's that? How's that for a prayer? That they may learn not to blaspheme. We'll look at it in chapter 5, verse 20. Man, they are blaspheming. And if these two have anything to do with the beginning of this chapter, bringing back the law, that's blasphemy. And that's what this whole chapter seems to be about. Law and sin. So Timothy is a remarkable man if Paul says, hey, I leave you to this charge. 
Here's your armor. Yes, sir. Paul? Yes, Timothy? Can I go? No, stay. Stay. And take you back to Moses and Joshua. Another typology, another Bible story. That, man, what, what a great thing. See, you read the Old Testament. It's great. It's great. 